Step behind the camera and welcome to the iPhotography Podcast. Well, welcome along to the iPhotography Podcast. It's Stephen here. And today I've got a really special guest that I'm going to be talking to. Um, our guest today is Vered Brett. And Vered is an Israeli-born Portuguese-based uh, photographer, but she's not just a photographer. Not that just photography itself is a, is a boring thing in any way, shape or form, but she's probably one of our first guests that we've had on the show who is a photographer and also a painter. She's an artist in a different form. She, I think she would classify herself as like an abstract painter expression painter um so if you're watching the podcast on youtube we're going to be able to kind of put up some ex uh, examples of her painting as well as the photography and hopefully we're going to be able to talk about the the combination of two i don't know if she finds you know one informs the other for her if she gets motivated by one or another etc as well but this is kind of why i wanted to talk to her a little bit because she's kind of quite novel in that sense that she has these two different creative outlets and I know I've spoken to many photographers in the past and sometimes some of them do have a different creative outlet sometimes they do a bit of drawing or a little bit of authoring and, and writing etc um, but it's interesting to know you know how having two different forms of artistic outlets kind of keep someone motivated in a way and whether it's something that could help you and um, you know if you're feeling that you, you've got a little bit of a creative block you know going on you're not wanting to pick up the camera you know how about picking up a paintbrush maybe doing something a little bit different from what you're used to but either way I'm going to bring Vera in and we're going to kind of get the uh, the background a little bit more about her photography and you know how she sees photography and her painting her traditional art blending together but I hope you enjoy the show if you've been listening for a little while and watching the podcasts on YouTube and you've been enjoying us please if you can give us a little bit of feedback a little bit of a review I think now even on Spotify you can actually leave a rating which I think that's a fairly new feature so if you're able to kind of leave a little bit of a rating on Spotify that helps us with the old rankings and same again on Apple Podcasts if you're able to leave a little ranking uh, rating and a, and a review again we'll love you forever on that front but anyway let's get on with the show as well Vered is waiting in the wings and again thank you so much for listening and on with the show so welcome along, Vera, to the podcast. Thank you so much for for hopping on as well. Have you have you ever done anything like this before? Is this kind of a, a new thing? It's my first podcast, so I'm very excited. Thank you for having well, me. You're very very welcome. I mean, for for people that aren't familiar with you in terms of your artwork and photography, I think it's always good to start off these little interviews by just getting a. I suppose a backstory really for the things that you're interested in and mm. what 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 you are as an artist, who you are, but also looking at it uh, from a, a photographic point of view to understand, you know, what your photography journey has been like, you know, when you picked up a camera, how long ago it was and, you know, what, what brought you to it as well. But can you give us like a, a little bit of a, a history to the life of Vered? <laughs> Yeah, it would be a long one, but <laughs> um, no, I, I, yes, I grew up in Israel and I think the context is a little bit, is important actually, because um, I grew up in a religious home and there was a lot of restrictions around anything that was um, creative or artistic because um, I was always drawn to it. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, it was never encouraged or um, entertained in any way and sometimes even forbidden um so when I left home first I was about 18 or so I had my first real job got my first real salary payslip um and I bought my ca first camera I don't know why I was drawn to photography because nobody in my family was there was nothing that had you know nothing that was related at all to photography um or nobody and and it was just something that I felt, you know, I need to, I wanted to do it. I wanted to explore it. Um, and I bought my first, it was a Nikon, like a gold Nikon uh, film camera with, I don't know if you know that slider that kind of yeah, opened. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was so expensive to develop film, and but I loved it. I just like started taking pictures of, you know, landscapes and, even myself and which is now I'm looking back I'm thinking yeah nobody else recorded my life then so it was just me well um, that's an interesting point in itself really as you, as you brought it up given the the household the atmosphere that you grew up into that it, it didn't embrace anything artistic that yeah did you do you have like a lot of family photos or images from your your childhood or anything like that 
That's the thing. Um, it's a good point. No, I mean, I'm looking back now. I took some photos from my parents' home with me that kind of traveled with me around the world whenever I went. Um, I only have photos. I have some photos from my birthdays, but, you know, I have my four-year-old. I have photos of him every day uh, on my phone. And for me, from my childhood, I don't have anything that really shows from a certain age, there's nothing. There's no record of me growing up. And I mean, not to blame my parents, it was just not um, <clears throat> something that, you know, they were familiar with or yeah. interested in, I guess. Yeah, um, so, so you say there's nobody else in your in your family, like in your circle that, that was artistic in any way. There's nobody that inspired you to take up photography. It was just something that had you know caught your attention more you know and, and no one else had kind of prompted you to do it was that kind of what happened yes I am the oldest of four so I have three brothers and for me there was no influence that would explain this need to take photos or be interested even in photo photography but today my brothers are they're surfers so I think I influenced them because they are two of them are photograph uh, surfing photographers Wow. So, uh, it's quite interesting how this, you know, I take credit for some of the, the impacts <laughs> on them. But it's true. It, it does happen. I've noticed in families that it kind of comes down the generation. So obviously it's got to start somewhere that if somebody mm -hmm. picks up a, a, a paintbrush, a camera, whatever it may be, but that yeah. artistic medium then, then follows, you know, into other generations as well. So it's not not totally surprising, but also surprising at the same time that your household, as you said, you know, you, you didn't really embrace anything like that. And now, you know, most of your siblings have, have taken it up. So, uh, so there was obviously some sort of creative passion that was, was burning inside all of you really to, to do that as well. Yeah. But I mean, how, how long ago, you know, have you kind of, did you start in photography, maybe kind of taking it more seriously alongside, because I know, you're not just a photographer um not to say that you know being photographer being a photographer is an easy thing anyway but you're also a painter as well um so I thought it'd be very interesting to kind of know what brought you into that type of visual medium as well that it, you know you're not just photography but you're also kind of uh, yeah. what I would say is like traditional art in a sense as well the old arts but how how did that come about yeah that's it is an interesting um development I guess of uh, I was always into art remembering you know since I was a child but it's the same story with photography it was not uh, something that was ever I was encouraged uh, let's say to explore and when I did show interest to my family um, it was just dismissed I guess to to some extent um, and I'm looking back at it now when I do when I do my art, my paintings, when I do my photography and thinking, you know, who, there's always that place of thinking, who, what could I have been? Who could I have been today if somebody just said, yes, go for it. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, or somebody, you know, see the potential because when you're a child, nobody can, you need that guidance from from the people who are looking after you um and a little push I guess and yeah I, I think you're really right yeah there's like we were saying before you know photography or you know any art is sometimes inspired by somebody else but if no one else is around you to to give you that motivation that confidence and say you're doing the right mm. thing it's it's yeah. hard to keep that passion really but it's it's also wonderful that that you have got to such a brilliant point that you know we'll be able to kind of put some images um up on screen on on, on the video version of the podcast of Vera's artwork and her photography but there'll also be uh links in the description so you can go and check out her websites to, to actually see it if you listen to the podcast but it is so complete you know you 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 know it, it's not it doesn't look that you're in the the amateur stage let's say of, of of learning to paint as well these are very very kind of completely kind of considered pieces of artwork but was it a case that you had to be self-taught or did you have you gone on to any courses for your painting and artwork I haven't um self-taught artist um it's just I believe my view is that you were born an artist you have it in you or you don't I'm sure you can learn to take you know to paint um but I think there's something special about people who are naturally 
able to express what's inside them mm. through visual arts, whether yeah. it's photography or sculpturing or painting. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they're consistent with it. Um, because for me, it's it's painting and photography are two mid, I would say, channels of me expressing freedom and and they're therapeutic for me as well. They're healing um, things from from the past. And I think we all carry, you know, those kind of uh, baggages or we all have wounds we need to heal. And this is where art is just a medicine. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because it, it leads me on to my next question about the the content of your imagery. So focusing a little bit more on your photography, that it, it's it's diverse and it's beautifully diverse that there's, there's portraits, landscapes, you know, a, a range of different other genres. There's no... Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of specific focus necessarily but you know do you approach photography as just an opportunity to capture what you see you know and, and let kind of life you know a, a occur in front of you and you kind of capture it with a camera rather than going out to capture you know specific shots you know is that is that how you approach the, your photography in that way yeah um photography is for me is yeah it's a way to capture moments i think of of beauty or inspiration, um, just something moves me when I, you know, as we, as I live my life, I move around places and see things or people and something, there's a moment where something touches me. And for me, the camera is a, a tool to kind of make that moment immortal in a way. I know it sounds very deep, but it's what it does to, to me. Um, because that moment will go. It's just like that. It's just like that click of the camera. You know, you it's so instant and quick and it helps me to cherish that memory. Yeah. So I don't have, yeah, um, I think I'm leaning to more towards la nature, I would say, and portraits because I find them more interesting than for, I don't know, animals, for example, or yeah. flowers. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you that, you know, photography is lived in, it's lived in milliseconds, you know, when we talk about uh, mm. shutter speed or things like that, you know, we're, we're talking about fractions of a second because that's how quickly, you know, a moment can occur and, and then be lost. And as you say, you'll never take two pictures that are exactly the same, you, you know, there's many different factors that affect it really. Um, and, you know, does that, does that kind of then influence your artwork as well? I wondered if there was ever some sort of connection between your your painting and your photography that maybe one inspires another. Maybe you take a really nice image one day and you think, I want to you know, transform that into a painting or vice versa. Do the, do the two ever combine? Yes, I think they not only combine, I think, I, I think they complement each other. Um, what I... What I observed when I started my art journey, uh, I should say painting journey because photography is also art, is to is, is that composition, for example, was I borrowed it from the world of photography into my painting. Um, also the way I use color, because I use Lightroom to edit my photos. And then I kind of transfer that knowledge into um, into painting and also the use of light. So I do that with painting. And I think if we, we think if I think of the other way around, where art, where my painting are kind of contributing to photography. Um I wonder if it's I'm thinking of the process because painting, painting takes time. So it could be months to finish a painting. Whereas photography is an instant, right? It's yeah. you take the photo and that's it. Yes, you can sit for some time to edit it, but it is what it is in that moment. Um, <clears throat> I think they just um, really kind of contribute to each other. Really, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of a way where my painting is actually interfering, you know, in a positive do, way. <laughs> do you feel like kind of one, motivates you with another because I suppose the mm. one thing I was going to say before um motivation obviously is a, is a huge hurdle for some people with whatever type of um, artwork that you're interested in or you know you, that you pursue um and I, I wondered with having two different outlets in a way because I've asked this before with photographers that you know is photography the only 
form of art that they do does anybody do any like writing or sculpting mm. or, or dancing or such and, and some do some don't and I wondered how important it was to maybe have a different outlet say for example that you know if you just were um, yeah, you weren't excited by picking up the camera or something like that one time but you were into your painting for a little bit have you found and then you know doing maybe a series of paintings or a collection then it maybe inspires you to get outside with the camera and continue that expression of art but just in a different form and and vice versa really if you're ever feeling a little bit low and you've not been painting for a while do you find like you know picking mm -hmm. up the camera helps you get motivated to paint do they do they work to to move you and inspire you yeah, the motivation is is a big part for both my photography and uh, for any creativity, right? But for my painting, I did an art uh, mentorship program with Ty Clark in the US and I finished it in December. And one of the things we talked about a lot was motivation because there are many moments where you feel stuck. And for me, that was a big one in photography as well, where I was waiting for an inspiration. You know, you have this, you just keep saying, oh, I don't feel it today and there's no, nothing is inspiring me. So you push it and you push and you push it and it never happens. And then you never actually create anything. Um, and the same happened to me with painting. I never, I had all these art supplies I always got excited about when I went, you know, passed by an art, art shop and I bought them, but I never actually sat down because I was waiting for the muse to, to land on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And to kind of lead my hand. But what I've learned the hard way is that the only way to motivate yourself is to actually do the work every day. You actually have to take the camera, go out and take photos. You, you have to sit down with a canvas or paper and paint yeah. and it will happen. Yeah. And it's funny that we, I'm one of those people, but I think many of us think that if, the second we pick up a camera or in my case also a paintbrush something good has to happen right the result has to be amazing and everybody will love it um and i don't know why we have this expectation because this is like i compare it always to learning a new language you can't actually you can't start and speak the language on the first day you have to learn every day and just practice and practice and practice until you get something good yeah, I, I, I can't agree with you enough that many people, no, no, I think they maybe rush themselves too much to try and take the perfect shot straight away, or mm -hmm. they, they expect every time they go out with a camera that they're going to get something good. Maybe the conditions are lovely, the sky looks really nice, but it still doesn't always translate to a good, meaningful image that comes down to the photographer, you know, in the same way as an mm -hmm. artist, ultimately we're in control of it, the camera and the paintbrush can only do so much, but they have to be guided by that person. So I, I think you're right. You, you've got to get out there and be positive and be looking for those opportunities. But yeah, you can't pressure yourself enough because I think otherwise you can come home. And I, I've done it loads of times that you come back from a shoot and you go, it, it doesn't, it just didn't really work out. You know, the lighting wasn't there. There wasn't anything interesting or that inspired you. And it's like, well, you know, say la vie. It's one of those things, but you know, there's tomorrow, maybe I'll try again. But as long as you keep going and going and going, then, you know, like you said, good things will happen to you. And it's, it's how you get out of a kind of a creative block, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah it can be very frustrating. And I've experienced this and everyone who's an artist experiences that all the time. And it's just part of it. It's part of the, of being an artist, right? Whether it's yeah. photographer or, or painter. Um, and I think there's a point where the shift happens when you learn to embrace that, yeah. that this is part of the process. And once you're on the other end of it, amazing things happen. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And it, I think a lot of people can end up accidentally pressurizing themselves because they see so many good images uh, yeah. you know on the internet online and it looks so easy that everybody's doing it but the truth behind it is very different and I think you know that if that truth was more often exposed that there's lots of failures and you know unsuccessful images and paintings that you may have just discarded etc I think people that when we feel a little bit more hopeful that you know that they can reach those same things but um, yeah. I, I wanted to move a little bit onto your paintings at the minute because I'm I know you're about to release a new collection of images a new collection of paintings and I think, are they what's behind you? What I can see on the easel there? Is that part of the yeah. collection? Yeah, this is, uh, these are six of the 10. So there are 10 in the series. Uh, it's a new series called Cut the Cord. 
which I will release on Saturday, the 9th of April. Yes. And so, so what are they about? And you give us a little bit of a, an, an artist statement behind them all. What's the, <laughs> the intent of the images? Because I'd love to see a bit more about them. So, yeah, I'm sure. And Thank again, you. obviously, if anybody's listening or watching and want to see, check out all the descriptions. I'm sure they'll be they'll be on your website or so social yeah. media, won't they? We'll be able to see some more. But what, what, what's the what's the, uh, the cut the cord? What's the idea behind that? Yeah, Cut the Cord is, um, is about, it started about motherhood um, because for me, I think being, becoming really an artist started when I became a mom or kind of got me, pushed me, I guess, to express a lot of things from when I became a mom of four years ago. And um cutting the cord is not obviously uh, it's more familiar for me from having given birth to my son but it's really about cutting the cord with my background Mm -hmm. the relationship to my religious world that I grew up in um all those restrictions everything that I was told this is who you should be this is who you are um and it took me a long time to to just let go of it, to to leave it behind, to come to terms with, you know, I am someone, I am this, I'm not what I've been told. Yeah. Um, and accepting who you are as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can imagine it must be very, very hard to almost rebel in a way, and what may may feel like rebelling against, yeah. as you say, you know, what you what you've been told, what you've been brought up to believe, and then actually to think, well. You know, you have that freedom of thinking, and and as you say, you know, now it's in inferred to your to your son as well. That I'm sure he'll grow up in a very creative background and gives the, yeah. gives him the opportunity to to express that or not, whatever he may may please, really as well. So it's yeah, it's yeah. it's like a, a new chapter, I suppose, in a way, really. And 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 what what is the basis of these paintings? Are you is sorry, I'm I get, I'm a little bit green when it comes to painting, but is it, <laughs> are we watercolor? Are we oil base? What, what type are, of no, uh, it's acrylic acrylic, acrylic. paints most mostly and um i use oil pastel it's mostly acrylic oil pastels and some charcoal excellent so are are these going to be for sale are these going to be available yes on saturday these will be in my on my website on my shop and available yes there we go there we go well i'm hard to let go of them they're like babies (laughs) well that that must be a hard thing because i suppose when it comes to photography you know it's a good point you can make copies of images you've always got a backup but with a with a print with art with paintings i mean yeah you can make copies etc but it's not always straightforward um but yeah do you kind of find it that a little bit harder to to let go with a painting yeah definitely i mean i'm looking at it now and i look at them every day because it's 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 difficult you're right with photography you you take a photo you can you have it it's yours right the original is always yours yeah the originals in painting once you sell it it's gone and i find it i want people to have them but um it's kind of a process that i'm going through um yeah. to let go of them because they do feel like it's part of me my paintings are you know each one is a reflection of some emotion and part of my soul and it's just giving it to someone it's like almost like giving your child to someone in my, well yeah i mean in ironically i think there is another level to that cut the cord as, you, as you're saying as well you literally have to abandon yeah. your attachment physically maybe more so with your paintings to, to pass it on to somebody else who you know yeah. will keep passing it down the generations like a family in a way as well so there's there's quite a humbling thing to it as well but yeah I imagine you know yeah. it's maybe the difference where people who 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 kind of just you know are photographers and not you know painters etc as well that's maybe something that we don't um understand or appreciate as much because as you say you know we'll always keep hold of our raw images you know and we can sell variations of it um but yeah i suppose it's something i've never really can considered in a way as well that yeah how you know it's, it's like i suppose if you're listening to this or watching this, this as a photographer it'd be literally like giving your archive of raw images away and you know not really seeing them again as well it sounds quite quite scary when you actually say it as yeah. well so yeah i think there's there's a, a newfound respect on that front really for for painters but um when it when it comes to obviously the you know, all your images and, you know, a mixture of your painting and photography for anybody that's been watching and anyone that's been listening, um, you'll, will hopefully we'll put all the descriptions kind of in the links for Vered's website, but, and do you have, um, like social media that people can check you out on where, where's that? 
Yes, um, I have an account for my art, which is at Vered Brett. And the other one is the photography is at Shot by Vered. Fantastic. And they're both, both Instagram, aren't they? These are on Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook page that is Vered Brett Art. And I have my website, of course, uh, veredbread.com. Yeah. Lovely. So we'll put all those links in the description yeah. so you can go, if you're listening to this as soon as we've released the episode, um, go and have a listen uh, and look out for, because I think this episode's going out potentially tomorrow. So maybe at the later end of the week, did you say on the 9th of April? Is that right? Yes. Uh, Saturday, yes, nine. Saturday. So in a few days' time, um, yeah, if you kind of caught the episode around about 9th of April, um, then go and have a look at Vera's website. Even if you're catching this weeks, months down the line, I'm, there's always going to be something worthwhile going onto that website for and having a look anyway. But the one final question I wanted to ask, this is something that we ask everybody that comes on for uh, uh, the podcast, is, is really kind of about traveling back in time. That if you were to go back in time, you know, to, yeah, when you were picking up a camera firstly, whenever, you know, when that was, if you could give yourself one little bit of advice to make photography easier or, you know, a bit more understandable, what, w- what would it be? What would you say to your younger self? Wow, so many come to mind. Uh, <laughs> I would say that the biggest one is something I mentioned is don't wait for the perfect moment uh, or, you know, that inspiration. Yeah. And just take photos. What I would tell myself is just take the camera every day with you and take photos all the time. And don't be discouraged when the first shots or as many shots as you take are not as good as you were hoping for. Uh, Because it's, it takes time. I mean, good things really take time and practice. So, um, I, I just want, I want to mention something that uh, it's a book that I read in my art mentorship program, but it's good for anyone who's creating anything. Yeah. Yeah. Go um, for it. What's about? Thanks. It's, it's, uh, the author is called um, Stephen Pressfield and the book is called the war of art. And he talks about resistance and I don't know if you're familiar with it. I, I uh, feel like I've heard the name of the book. I've not heard the author, but yeah, I feel like I've, I've heard it before, but yeah, yeah. I, but how, what, how has it helped you? So it's, um, it talks about, it calls it resistance. Resistance is really self-doubt, um, fear, procrastination, this need for perfectionism that people who are creative always have. And really any resistance is anything that stops us from doing our work or following our passion. And when I say work, you know, it could be your hobby as a photographer or it could be your career as as a painter, whatever it is. Um, So the book really goes through those and how to and ways to conquer them. Um, And this relates to what I'm I'm saying that, you know, taking the perfect shot and being discouraged when it's not what you thought. And you look at other people on Instagram and you think, oh, I'll never be there. Yeah. I'm never going to sell my work. We, we have so many things in our head that stop us from doing what we really want to do. That it's insane. <laughs> That's no, we, that, the only one stopping ourselves. It is. It's it's the funny thing that, yeah, we, we look at our camera kit and we look at the weather and how things are outdoors and, and always yeah. say, oh, it's not great or, you know, the camera's not brilliant. And But yeah, ultimately, it's, it's us saying that, you know, the, the camera's not broken. There's there's always an opportunity. Yeah. There's never a bad light. It's just you need to adapt. So, yeah, I think it I think it's, it'd be a good kind of culture shock for some people to kind of understand that the issues aren't with the conditions or the gear. It's it's with them and the psychology mm-hmm. as to how they see the camera and that they've just got to get out there with it as well so yeah no, thank you very much for the recommendation because I'm, I'm sure everyone's always looking for something that they can use to to motivate and inspire themselves by as well yeah. but but thank you in general as well um for coming on them Vered, because okay. it's been such an insightful talk we we've talked a lot um you know over the past year or so with with photographers and I think you're the first person who kind of has that 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 a bridge really to a different form of art that we've talked to and it's interesting to see how one informs the other uh, and how different you know and you know thinking can be and approaches can be and especially that you've grown up in a, a household that was very limited um you know in terms of its, its creative outlet as to kind of yeah. how prolific you are now with your photography and your artwork that you you're selling your artwork now and you know I imagine there's many people that have been in that situation where they, they were much, weren't surrounded by creative people and therefore never really came 
creative as well. So that the passion that driver you've got is is absolutely admirable as well. So so maybe it's a case that you know in the future we can kind of catch up again and actually see how your your paintings have grown, your photography's changed maybe as well. You know what new kind of uh, collections are coming out with. I think that'd be that'd be really nice to do maybe in the future. Yeah, absolutely. That would be really nice. Yes. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for popping on anyway. And if you've been listening and watching to the podcast, thank you so much for uh, kind of keeping with us as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've got one more episode next week. Uh, so to Vered, in the meantime, thank you so much. And we'll catch up with you in the future. Thank you. Stephen.